Blessed Sunday morning. God is good. Psalm 103 verse 1 to 5 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with the loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God is good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are so good to us. You, blood, you have blessed us tremendously. Our cup truly overflows. We can acknowledge your mercy so much more, Heavenly Father. We acknowledge your grace. We acknowledge that you loved us so much that you died on the cross for our sins. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We continue to lift up to you and intercede for our government leaders of this nation, Lord God. We pray that they may acknowledge you and seek guidance from you before making decisions, especially now with what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. We lift up to you, Lord God, uh, Ukraine. So many lives are changing for the worse. So many lives are looking for comfort and answers and peace. I pray, Lord, that you provide people that will direct those lives towards you. Lord, lift it to our, our birthday celebrants this week. We lift it to Manang Linda. Thank you, Lord, for giving her another, uh, another year. Thank you, Lord God, for her life and her willingness, Lord, to serve FACC for so many years. You know, Lord God, that she continues to struggle with her neuropathy. We pray for healing and comfort. We pray that she may continue to look to you, Lord God, for those things. Continue to give her wisdom for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alan Donaldson, the General Secretary of the European Baptist Federation. And right now I'm standing at the border between Poland and Ukraine. 
In the background, people are arriving and they are being greeted by family, by friends and by complete strangers who are welcoming them. Local Baptist churches are receiving them and giving them accommodation. Tonight, over 350 people will be housed in the local Baptist church and then they will move on later in the day to other Baptist centres and family and friends throughout the country. I have with me the Polish Baptist uh, president, Marek. Marek, can you tell us what would you have us pray for this night? It's, on the one hand, it's a hard question because there is so many things which stays in my uh, mind, my spirit, my emotions. But shortly say, I will say, please pray for wisdom from above. Please pray for strength for those who open their houses, churches and centers. I should start from, please pray for, for that direction, Ukrainian and peace for these people. But when you ask me, as a Polish guy, please pray for us so we will have a love for these people and we will bless the nation of Ukraine and be a good example for others. Actually, our union has has a, a, a center we call multifunctional center with 200 beds we opened this center then we also created a network with all churches that are located near the borders the churches who who, who lives near the borders actually they are in the first line they are feeding all refugees on Moldovan side and on the other side. Uh, they are allowed through a special permission, if you are a pastor, the Ukrainian um, uh, customers, they allowed our pastors to go through the, the border and bring food for the refugees. Well, the, the, the picture is, is very, very painful. Now the, the crowd of refugees is growing higher and higher. At the beginning, I would say first few, two or three days, all our churches mobilized and we used all our resources as we could. Uh, now we, we, we discovered that we need uh, a desperately help from our brothers and sisters from abroad in order to meet these needs. Ukraine is fighting against the Russian army and many cities are surrounded by the army and uh, problems are starting with food and basic things for the life of the people. So those Christians who are staying in the cities, mainly they stay at church basements. Churches pre were prepared for this, so they had the, uh, enough water and food and basic stuff. But now with all this terrible shooting, the lack of water, the lack of food. So we are near to the humanitarian crisis. And now our main task is how we can bring uh, money and goods to these churches. Please pray for us because the challenge is great. Uh, the need is huge and we need supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to work during these times. As you have seen, Baptists were amongst the first people to respond, both inside Ukraine and in the neighbouring nations. Thank you so much for standing with the Ukrainian people in prayer over the past two weeks. Can I encourage you to continue to pray? But can I also ask you to give financially? If you are giving in Europe, just now. We would encourage you to give to your local Baptist Union, Association, Convention or Federation. They will in turn 
pass that money on to the European Baptist Federation, who are leading the global response for Baptists for Ukraine. Thank you for your generosity. We're going to continue our series in the Minor Prophets, so let's do a quick review. Starting with Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zechariah, and Malachi. Okay. Are you a fair person? If you define fairness as treating everyone the same, I can honestly say that I'm not a fair person. I treat certain people better than others. By the way, Miriam would kill me if I became a fair person, treating everyone the same. Let, let me explain. Let me share with you what I do for Miriam, what I do with Miriam. I would give her kisses, I would give her big hugs, oh, I would open the door for her, I would hold her hand in public, I would text her love you mess messages. Um, and what would happen, what would you think if, if I started to do those things with other women. Think about it. If I did all those things with other women and you asked me, Sam, why are you being so lovey-dovey, being flirtatious with, with other people besides your wife? And I would respond, you know what? I just want to be fair. I just want to treat every woman the same. Okay. That's not justifiably correct. That's not a good answer to justify my being flirtatious with other women, right? Don't, don't let that ever be an excuse for you. You know, I treat Miriam extra special, better than other women because she's what, she's what I call my WW, my wonderful wife. And today, we're going to discuss how God treated a certain people extra special, not because they deserved it, but just because. Hosea chapter 1, 6 to 11. Hosea chapter 1, verse 6 to 11. Last week we talked about how God told Hosea to marry a prostitute named, you remember who that prostitute's name was? Gomer. And God named the first child, what was her, the first child's name if you recall? Jezreel. Symbolizing bloodshed. That's going to, that is going to happen to Israel. Because the nation continually committed spiritual prostitution by turning away from the Lord. Now we talked about how, what was the guy that made a lot of bloodshed? Do you remember who that was? Started with a J. Jehu. Jehu made so much bloodshed, killed so many people, he abused his power to the point that he, he made so much bloodshed, killed so many people in the city of Jezreel. All right. Now, two more children are going to be born with names that symbolize how God felt about Israel. Just a reminder, at this point, the Hebrew people are living in a divided kingdom. The southern kingdom is Judah, and the northern kingdom is Israel. Verse 6. Verse 6. Hebrews 1, verse 6. She conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her No Pity, a.k.a. Lo Ruhama, Lo Hut Ruhama, because I will no longer have pity on the nation of Israel, for I certainly will not forgive their guilt. The name of the second child is what? Lo Ruhama, meaning no pity. Because, the, because Israel decided to reject God, he will not forget their guilt. He will not forgive their guilt. But look what, listen to this. Look how biased this is for God. Look what he does with Judah though. Verse 7. But I will have pity on the nation of Judah. I will deliver them by the Lord their God. I will not deliver them by the warrior's bow, by sword, by military victory, by chariot horses, 
or by chariots. God gave Judah special treatment. He even gave them his own personal touch. He's not going to, he himself is going to deliver them. Not with, not with the other man-made things, but he himself will protect and deliver Judah. Now, why does God do this? Is, 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 is Judah necessarily guilt-free? No, they're guilty just as Israel was guilty. But he gives pity on Judah. Why? Do they deserve it? No. Judah is just as guilty as Israel, but for some reason, God decides to have pity on them. Verse 8. When she had weaned, no pity, lo ruhama, this is Gomer, she conceived again and gave birth to another son. Then the Lord said, Name him not my people, lo ami. Lo ami, because you are not my people and I am not your God. Talking about Israel. Now God gave the name, what was the name of the child? Lo ami, not my people. Again, because Israel rejected God. They will no longer be His people. But there is a ray of light in this darkness here. Listen to verse 10. However, however, in the future, the number of the people of Israel will be like the sand of the sea, which can neither be, not, which can be neither measured nor numbered. Although it was said to them, "You are not my people," it will be said to them, "You are the children of the living God." Now, any guesses when will, will this future be, and who are these people that God is talking about? It's happening today as we speak and more and more people from different tongues and nations the gentiles we we are that people that god that a uh, people of god that jose is talking about that we will be the true nation of israel that will be like the sand of the sea which can neither be n n measured nor numbered although it was said of us the gentiles that we are not god, we are not god's people god said to us you are the children of the living God, we the Gentiles. Verse 11, Then the people of Judah and the people of Israel will be gathered together, finally. They will appoint for themselves one leader and will flourish in that land. Certainly, the day of Jezreel will be great. In the future, the nation of Israel will be no longer divided. God will be their king. And instead of Israel, known for its bloodshed, it will be symbolized by a day of greatness. God does all this out of His mercy. We don't deserve God's goodness. We are like Judah. We are like, we're guilty. But God decided to show us mercy. It's not, that, it's not about being good enough. It's not about working hard enough. We are still guilty. We're all sinners, but God intervened on our behalf. Instead of us being punished for our sins, Jesus took, it on, took our guilt on the cross. He did it because He had pity on us. Just like He did on Judah. You know, Paul talks about this passage directly in the book of Romans about God's mercy in Romans 9. He talks about Hosea chapter 1 in Romans 9. He says this, What shall we say then? Is there injustice with God? Absolutely not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and have compassion in whom I have compassion. So then, it does not depend on, doesn't depend on human desire or exertion, but on God who shows what? Mercy. It's all dependent upon God. He gets to decide. Some of you might be thinking, well, is it fair that God shows mercy to Judah and not Israel? Good question. Paul answers this, this, this question uh, in the same chapter here. Verse 22. I'm going to read from the NIV version. In the same way, even though God has the right to show His anger and His power, He is very patient with those on whom His anger falls, who are destined for destruction. 
He does this to make the riches of His glory shine even brighter on those to whom He shows what? Mercy. Who are prepared in advance for glory. And we are among those whom He selected, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. Verse 25. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in a prophecy of Hosea, just one, one we just read, Those who were not my people, I will call my people. And those I will love whom I did not love before. 26. And then at the place where they were told you were not my people, they will be called children of the living God. We as believers are recipients of God's mercy. We were destined for destruction, but God gave mercy on us. We were adopted by God to be part of His family. We didn't deserve it. God chose us. And we were adopted to be part of His family. Ephesians 1, 5 says in NLT version, God declared in advance to adopt us into His own family by bringing us to Himself through Jesus Christ. This is what He wanted to do and He gave Him great pleasure. It was all about God. Nothing about us. We're guilty. It was all about God giving us mercy. And because of God's mercy, God chose us to adopt me and I am forever grateful. Let me ask you this question. Are you grateful? Are you truly grateful? Nothing from what we've ever done or could do could change the status of our guilt. But God willingly forgave us. God willingly gave us mercy. You know, um, Leah has a good friend who lives in Fullerton. That family has nine children. Yes, nine children. Six biological and three adopted. And th th these parents have a huge heart. Especially because of this. The three adopted, two are blind and one is special needs. I mean, they chose to do this out of their good pleasure. They chose to do this because they wanted to help. You know, God adopted us out of His good pleasure because He wanted to help us. Out of His mercy. We as believers are shown mercy by God. Again, let me just read to you Ephesians 4, 1-5. God decided in advance to adopt us into His own family by bringing us, bringing us to Himself through Jesus Christ. That's what He wanted to do. Not because of anything we've done or could do. I mean, we were headed for destruction. But for some reason, God chose us to be part of His family. Now let me ask you this question. What's our response? What's our response for this, this, this God's mercy upon us? Be willing to show mercy to those who don't show mercy to you. Be willing to show mercy even to those people that don't show mercy to you. Will giving mercy depend upon the other person? No, don't let that be. Show mercy independent on how they act or they feel about you. Independent, again, of what they, how they act or what they feel about you. It doesn't matter. Are there people in your life that upset you? Show mercy. Are there people in your life that irritate you? Show mercy. Are there people in your life that cheated you? Show mercy. Are there people in your life that talk bad about you? Show mercy. But Sam, what if they take advantage of my mercy? Ask God for wisdom and humility. God showed us so much mercy, may we share with others. On a news article dated October 3, 2019, Amber Geyer, the former Dallas police officer, was convicted for shooting Botham Jean as he ate ice cream in his own house. Geyer said that she aimed to kill out of fear after entering the wrong apartment by mistake. Yet, the jurors still f found her guilty with murder. Amber Geyer was convicted for murder and during the hearing, Botham Jean's 18-year-old brother, Brand, took the stand and said this. This is what he said. This is uh, the brother of the one that passed away. 
he says this to uh, Geyer, uh, Amber Geyer, the one that killed the uh, brother. I hope you go to God with all the guilt, with all the bad things you've done in the past. Each and every one of us may have done bad things, he said. I can speak for myself. I forgive you. I forgive you. If you go to God and ask Him, He will forgive you. I love you just like anyone else. I'm not going to say I hope you rot and died just like my brother did. I personally want what's best for you. I don't even want you to go to jail. I want what's best for you. That's exactly what Botham, my brother, would have wanted. The best would be the best would be to give your life to Christ. Wow, in, in the midst, in the midst of suffering the loss of the brother, she can he continues to forgive, to show mercy. He understood God's mercy and decided to show mercy to the person that caused him pain. As we begin to enter the resurrection season, practice exercising God's mercy to others. Matthew 5, 43-44 says, You have heard it, that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Who are your enemies? Who are those who are hard to love? Your neighbor, your co-worker, your relative, your children, your parents, your in-laws, your spouse? Practice and exercise showing mercy just as God has shown you mercy. Let us pray. I know, Lord, for myself, it's so hard, so hard, Lord God, to show mercy to others. We don't want to feel bad. We want to feel control. Uh, we don't want to be taken advantage of. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord God, with the help of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to be willing to be merciful, especially to those, Lord God, who we feel so much that they don't deserve our mercy. But let us remember, Lord, what you did. Lord, you died on the cross for us. You, we didn't deserve that. We deserved destruction. We deserve hell, Holy Father. But you gave us forgiveness, not because of anything we've done, Lord God, but because you chose to do so. Help us, O Lord God, to show that mercy to others, O Lord. For your glory and honor, in Jesus' name, Amen.
to wash it away. Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Wider than the snow you may be today. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all that do. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. In Jesus' name, Amen.